Welcome to another episode of Tell Me More. Dr. Wiles is back in the studio with us, and today we are talking Olympics and Ephesians. Mostly Ephesians. It's a great episode. We hope that you enjoy it. Welcome back to Tell Me More. Uh, it's a big deal. We're in the studio. The team is complete. Wow. You have We're me, here. you mm-hmm. have Luke, and you have Dr. Dennis R. Wiles back from study leave. Mm-hmm. This has not happened in a while. Mm-hmm. I know. A month? Five weeks? Yeah. I don't know. It's been a while. How do we feel about it? I feel really What's good about it. What's the dominant it? emotion in the room right now? <laughs> Joy. Fulfillment? Yes. I'm Joy. glad to be here. Me too. I've got lots of questions. Okay. You want to jump right in? Yeah. Okay. Dr. Wells, mm-hmm. before you left, uh, maybe like 10 days before you left, yes. we did a live recording of Tell Me More. We did. Luke was Florida Man on the screen, which mm-hmm. was just terrific. Which really good. Awesome. Um, we exchanged. I packed my visor specifically for that purpose. Oh, yes. well, it was, it delivered. I'm telling you, when you came on screen, it was the awesome. visor, the hair, the it was sunglasses, great. Everything. the tropical background. It was perfect. You had kind of like a canvas type shirt on, you know, like safari-esque, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just live for the bit, y'all. Yeah. Good job. Well, you did well. Way to go, Your Luke. summer camp experience came out, which we <laughs> talked about last week. Yeah. Um, but Dr. Wells, you and I exchanged some gifts. We did. Um, we did. You loaned me your yeah. Dan Fogelberg. Yeah. Innocent Age album by Dan Fogelberg. Which I did listen to. Good job, Katie. Did you catch that? Thoughts? You listen to Dan Fogelberg when I've been off. I, d- I promise. I didn't play the record. Okay. I listened to it on Spotify, but okay. I did listen to What'd James Fogelberg. And I like it. Yeah. Cause, and I thought I would because like, I like James Taylor. Can you I hum like a few bars? That. Yeah. Um, longer I, than. No, I didn't listen to Longer Than. in the ocean. Although, oh, I'm sorry. That was me humming. No, I was actually singing. <laughs> there was, <clears throat> anyway, kind of, leader, of the, leader of the band. Leader of the band. Yeah, I listened to that. So leader of the band is tired. I really did. His eyes are growing old. His blood runs through my instruments. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so I gifted you... Gifted, not just loaned. You did. You gave me a Jurassic, a Jurassic Park, Park T-shirt. T-shirt. You did. And I said something like, "If you don't listen, if you don't watch this movie, right? Well, you're on study leave. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. We can determine that later. It's not my job. I just want everybody to hear that. Uh, that that's not yes. Um So t- the question that we're all wondering, right? While walking, listening, driving, yes. sitting here. Yes. Did you watch Jurassic Park? Uh, no. <laughs> I still have not seen it. However, Jen gave me the book. Okay. And a DVD oh, that so I think has more than one. Is there more than one Jurassic Park? There are there's multiple several now. Jurassic okay. Park yeah. movies now. I think yeah. I have several. Okay. I have one night. It was really late. And I was in a moment of weakness. In, in a, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually opened the book. And, and kind of skim through a little bit of the book, you know, just to kind of get context okay, to two, prepare me for the movie. Two follow-up questions. Yeah. So. One, what do you think about the book? Uh, it's interesting. I mean, I'm I'm not a science fiction person. Okay. So it's a little hard for me with the little. Um, I mean, like. Yeah, there's a premise. I I, I, I did like um, Star Wars. Okay. You know, you so, can go there. Yeah, it okay. was good. Which is funny because Jurassic <laughs> Park is probably closer because there are people actively working on cloning mammoths right, yeah, Jurassic, right now. Jurassic Park is like reasonable. <laughs> Star I just Wars, went to I would the say Museum of Science and Natural History in Washington, D.C. Yeah, okay, so like, so, yeah, yeah, the premise of Jurassic uh, Park is not too yeah. far-fetched. Right. So, but, but like I said, I'm not. Okay, but it's tough it's for you. Not and my I get thing. That. Okay, I hear that. But I did kind of read through it a little bit just to kind of get the context of what it's about so that when I do finally watch it, I'll at least have some something to work with. When might that be? <laughs> Maybe this very week. I, I look forward to your review of Jurassic Park. How long does it last, the movie? Two hours? That's what I was thinking. Jurassic 90, 90 minutes? Two hours? Two hours that I got to spend. All right, well, I'm on a – Got to. I mean, two hours to invest in something entertaining like this. So we'll there see. it is. <laughs> anyway. There it is. Well, it's not a chore. The, I can't do it this you, week, though, because this week's all about the Olympics. It is. It, and is. So it also has a couple funerals and, and a wedding. And I've got plenty of yep. work to do this yep. week. That's yep. true. Um, okay. I did bring some trivia about the Olympics. Okay. But I know we've already talked about Jurassic Park. Let's can go I, for it. Can I just go rapid fire yeah. a few? Yeah. Okay. We have wasted more time I than love this. the Olympics uh, over the past if month. You didn't watch the first one with Ryan Chandler in here. First one or second one? I can't remember. We if you didn't watch all of them I, with I, Ryan I, I will Chandler. say this. Have we got into the sound? I will say this. I did watch every podcast save one. 
the last one. I didn't you watch the last one yet. And uh, but I did see you get crowned as the ho- ho- Reverend uh, prom, prom queen. queen. I did see the tiara that was a Gary Steele that Gary it. Steel. it was Gary Steele, not and, Gary Stidham. And, and it was a very you said Gary Stidham. I thought no, we well, did, and we got it wrong. Okay, Ryan we didn't Chandler wrong. got it wrong. Ryan got it wrong. Okay, he's Gary new. Steel. He's relatively okay, new. It's fine. He hasn't been here a year yet. But you said when you put it on that it wasn't a plastic. No, it's got it's, it's on it's, my desk. I'll okay, show it to it's you. It's like for real. It's like for real. Okay. Like, I'm so glad you got crowned. It's Finally, probably out of you were able to bring. Some closure. British Museum. Right. You, you could bring closure to yeah, this? I do. I feel different now. Yeah, okay, I feel good. different. Good. Yeah. Complete. <laughs> Complete. Shalom, I <one> might say. <laughs> um, oh, that's, man. A, that's a Bible joke. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. um, that was a good one. Thank you. I thought so. Um, okay. Real quick. Just a few Olympics trivia. Okay. Um, and those are listening and viewing can play along. Okay. Okay. How many times have the Olympics been hosted in Paris? Ooh, Twice. Say two. No, three times. Okay. Final I'm, answers? I'm saying two. I'm saying three. It's three times. Okay. Well, this is the third. Thank because the it, it happened in like 1900, 1920 something, and then it's happening again. Yes, 1924, and then exactly 100 mm. years later in 2024. Okay. okay. Approximately how many competitors are expected to compete in these 2024 games? That's an interesting question, right? 578. No. That's no, more than that. No, 578 I mean, just I mean, like the, one track. The US, the U.S. has like 400 or 500 something athletes. Yeah. Uh, what would you so say? So all together, know, 3, 000. put it all together, it's 10,000. That's a lot. 10,500. No wonder the beds are made of cardboard. Whoa. It's all they can afford. Wow. Right? Um, okay. Let me. Simone Biles. No. I know. Mm. I haven't even read all these. Uh, what, was, what nation was the first to host summer and winter games in the same year? I don't even know how that happened. What nation? Yes. The United States. What year was it? 1924. Uh, ooh. Is that? No. Well, France. Yep. That's it, because I just yeah. said that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, one more? Mm-hmm. Let's, let's do it. The London 1948 Games mm-hmm. were the last time this surprising category was represented at the Olympics. So it hasn't been in the Olympics since 1948. Mm-hmm. What surprising category? Um, I would say uh, individual synchronized swimming. Right? <laughs> swimming. <laughs> Tightrope walking. I have no idea. Art. Really? It was an Olympic category. I'll do more research on that. That's wow, fascinating that's to me. Interesting. Huh. I wonder who won and what was wow. submitted and who judged it and all those things. Do you get points? Art's so subjective. Do you have to yeah. stick the landing? Yeah. After it you is. Uh, <laughs> but how about Maybe the Olympics this year? Mm. So Sunny good. Lee, who obviously was a gymnast at Auburn. Oh, yeah, you love her because yeah, of Auburn, course. Right? Yeah, that she's very, like, she's she's very likable. She's a very likable person. Let's just talk about that 10K. Mm. United States hitting the rail, twisting mm-hmm. the ankle, getting cleated, and yeah. still yeah. getting bronze, which is like that? the first time we've gotten can, a medal or in the Scotty Scheffler coming from behind and winning the gold in the golf. I uh, confess I that. I'm sorry. <laughs> that I really haven't watched much of it at all. Yeah. It's not on purpose. I usually really like the Olympics, but... I didn't watch the opening ceremonies. I kind of missed it. And oh, then, you missed it if you didn't watch the opening ceremony. Well, I've heard about it, obviously. Uh, have you? <laughs> quite the Christian controversy. Oh, my goodness. Um, Lord help us. Uh, Sergio, I appreciate him. He said, I don't care which side you're on. Let's look at Jesus. You know, wow. He, Good did, job, he had a great line like that oh, at, at his sermon last two weeks ago. I love it. Yeah, it was, you know, when you hear a guest preacher say something yeah. very hot topic, I yeah. was like, I'm listening. And it was like... <laughs> I don't need to talk about Greek culture or, yeah. you know, whatever, yeah. Greek or Parisian culture, yeah. but we need to talk about Jesus. And wow. just, I, I think we had enough hot yeah. topics while you were gone. Boy, howdy. So. <laughs> um, I think we... I think we did it okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, since well, you've been gone and we won't, we, no commentary. Like but, I said, has um, anything happened? A presidential while I've been candidate has dropped has out. Anything happened and while I've been away? Been replaced. An assassination <laughs> attempt. An assassination attempt of. A, a former, former president, president, which is huge. Uh, the Olympics and, and their I opening, was in Washington, and their controversial D.C. opening ceremony. I spent a week in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Trying to get it all straightened out. And mm. how, how we. I just didn't have enough time. Is that I why mean, I feel different today? <laughs> so that's oh. why America's still broken. <laughs> no, it's my crown. I spent it's three just more crown. days in exactly D.C. Exactly right. I could have yeah. figured we this thing out. We can give you a further leave oh, if that's man. what you need. If, but, if you can fix America with more right. leave, be blessed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll hold it down here. We might stumble through it, but this is a big thing. It was great, though. We had a great time. Good. Well, I don't. I do want to hear about it, and I think mm-hmm. our listeners do. I don't know yeah. how much you want to share with us in mm-hmm. here, how much you're saving up for sermons yeah. or meetings or whatever. But uh, did you have a good leave? Was, I did. Did the right word. I, I did. I had a good time and um, got a lot of studying done, and did some. Uh, we did some family things. My my middle brother 
Tommy and his wife had their 50th wedding anniversary mm. in Northern Virginia. So we no went, small feat. We, yeah, we went and stayed with a bunch of family, kind of like a big reunion. And uh, we um, we left there, took the grandkids to Washington D.C. and wow. Monticello, Mount Vernon, and museums, sports theater. Um, I was really I was really pleased with our grandkids how how they navigated uh, all of that and. Um, um, Josiah and Adrian and their, I mean, little Gideon is only two, so he yeah. obviously wasn't quite into it all. But Ada, uh, She's I know you're not, to... I know you're not surprised, but Ada was definitely into all the yeah. history of the museum. She declared her candidacy. She, yeah, well, she, no, she made the decision that I need to run for president. Oh, okay. So she's ready for a poppy for president campaign. So, uh, yeah, she's talked all about it. And, uh, Poppy, I think you'd make a really good president after being here. I said, I think you're exactly right. I'm not allowed to, like, endorse <laughs> candidates just because of my yeah. Christian conviction and my ministerial title. Yeah. But I, I'd endorse Dennis Lowe. I'm just going to say it here <laughs> before exactly it happens. exactly what Ada said. Yeah. But if it and, did, um, I would do it. She wanted to go to the Holocaust Museum, and um, oh, but we mm, decided heavy. not let her go. Yeah. So it's we a took heavy the older museum. grandkids. Yeah, it's we a took very the, heavy museum. Um, but Josiah took... Uh, uh, Josh and Connor, but uh, and, and Ada, she said, "Well, Poppy, I have read the Diary of Anne Frank. I know all about the Holocaust, and I would like to, I would like to go." And we were like, mm, "You're ten years old. We're yeah. not going to do that." Yeah. So we didn't do that. But uh, but she she did really well. All the others, it was really really good. Mm. She had a great time. But uh, then spent a good bit of time just studying, praying, mapping out. Really, the next five years is kind of what I've been working on. So. I'll be ready to share all that eventually. So it was really good. Had a good time. Good. Missed all of y'all. Went to several other churches. Um, watched all of our services. Y'all both did really good. Thank you. Good job Thanks, preaching. Well. Appreciate it. And, As uh, did you yesterday. Well, you know, I was glad to be back yesterday. And uh, so, yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to do a little Ephesians for August. You know, so let's start about uh, Ephesians. Tell me yeah. more. Yeah. There's, well, had a great time in Houston. Because Ephesians has been hanging over our head. I know. That sounds negative, but it's been in, it the, in, it's it's in the air. In your it's mind been looming yeah. since last study leave. Is yeah, that fair? That's right. So, yeah. I mean, we've been yeah. we've had our eyes toward this for a while. So, well, it's a great letter. I mean, it's so different than any of Paul's other letters. Um, you know, I, as y'all know, I went to listen to N.T. Wright. Um, he did this uh, week long study on Ephesians. Um, down in Houston, so I was able to go, and he gave us his translation. He's translated the entire New Testament, but mm-hmm. he doesn't really publish all of it that way. But um, but he's actually done it. So he gave us his translation and gave us put the Greek text. It was funny. He said, "If if you want to, if you're a little nervous about my translation, the good news is the really clear Greek is located on the opposite page, so you can just read it in Greek." Oh <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, um, but um, I love it. But. You know, it's it's as I mentioned Sunday morning. Uh, here, here's the way N.T. Wright put it. He said someone he was doing a um, uh, he was finishing up one of his books with a colleague of his, and and just while they were talking, this colleague said, "What's your favorite Pauline book and why?" And if you know anything about N.T. Wright, I mean, he's one of the leading Pauline scholars mm-hmm. in the world, maybe even in the history of of Christian theology. He's a mm-hmm. brilliant New Testament scholar. And he said, "You know, <clears throat> ask it that way." He said. Um, he said, my house at that time, he said he was living in Scotland. And he said, in my house in Scotland, we have a um, a kitchen where all kinds of important things happen. And he said, uh, it's necessary things. And he said, that's Galatians. He said, um, then we have a dining room that's very well ordered and everything is always in its place and is set out just like it should be. So that's Romans. He said, then we have bedrooms and bathrooms where we all run into each other and all kind of other things are going. It's a little grittier. He said, that's first and second Corinthians. He said, but if you walk out on the back porch of our home in Scotland, you have this panoramic view of the mountains and the North Sea, and you can watch the sun go all the way across the horizon from east to west. He said, that's Ephesians. Mm. And that was a great way to start the study mm. because it's not like in Ephesians, Paul is describing the ideal church. And certainly Ephesus was not the ideal church. It's going to have its problems. It's more of Paul describing God's intent for the church, really. And that's how I would view it, that it's, it's, it's Paul taking a break from the problems. And, you know, like when Paul writes 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, you know, he'll say, some will say this, and here's the answer. It's kind of got that diatribe feel to it. Um, and you have kind of like Second Corinthians has all these hard hitting 
sentences in, in Greek. Whereas Ephesians is, is, um, it's just so different. You have these long sentences in Greek, you know, and it's just got a whole different feel to it. It's a short letter, but Paul's in prison. You know, he's trying to get the word out to the hinterland, so to speak, to all these Christians, let them know how to really live their lives. And he just has this panoramic view of what God has done through the church in this new humanity, if you will, this new creation, and how it basically affects every aspect of our lives, mm-hmm. you know, even down to our marriages, you know, which is quite fascinating, you know, that Paul Paul is going to talk about this new creation and the fact that it even affects ha- how you relate to your master if you're a slave, or how you relate to your children if you're a parent, or how to relate to your parents if you're a child. This is a fascinating to me, uh, incredible take on what God has done through the church. And so I have a whole, just this last year, a whole new, deeper appreciation for Ephesians. And then going and listening to NT Wright didn't hurt. But then I've just been studying and praying and working on it all. And I, I, I just, I just believe it's the most unique of all of Paul's letters. Hmm. It's so, won you over. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's interesting because historically, I would tell you in, in most of my, uh, past. I, 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 and I've always had a deep appreciation for Paul, so I don't mean it to sound like this because I do love Paul. And I have, obviously, um, as a Protestant, you know, the Roman Catholic Church is more Petrine. You know, mm-hmm. it's more connected to, to Peter, him being the, the supposedly yep, to the them, the yep. first pope, so to speak. Whereas the Protestant Church is more Pauline. You know, when you get to the Reformation era, the, 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 the church or the, the Protestant reformers were struggling with this whole conversation about justification. And so they turned to Paul yes, they're reading to answer Paul, those right? questions yeah. for yeah. them. And, um, and, and they and those Protestant reformers were very suspicious of high ecclesiology. You know, they were, they were nervous about giving the church too much credit, so to speak. Yes. Because of their context, they were looking at imperial Rome, and so there was a reaction against that. Um, and so, has, so consequently, the Protestant Church has been more Pauline in its view. And uh, well, I'm a Protestant, I'm a Baptist, and so there's there's no doubt that's a part of my heritage theologically. But I've been more as a as a pastor, and I would just say as a, as a theologian, I've been more gospel focused than I have been Pauline focused, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. A lot of appreciation for Paul, um, and obviously, and he's influenced my thinking. How could he not? I mean, he's <laughs> thirteen letters in the New Testament are his. But I would just say, through the years, I'm, I've probably been more, um, you know, Luke and, and Matthew in particular have probably influenced me uh, as much as anything. But nevertheless, as of late, you know, I've I've um, spent a good bit of time just walking through Paul's life. You know, F.F. F. Bruce and his study of Paul and, um, and, and then all the conversations that are going on today about Paul and this kind of newer approach to Paul and, and then N.T. Wright and his, he's definitely a Paul line scholar, you know. Um, I've just gotten a kind of a renewed interest in, in all of Paul's writings. And, uh, but I would eat, with that said, I would also say though that even as that's happened to me over the last four or five years, Ephesians was not hmm. prominent for me. It would have been Romans, Galatians, Philippians. Um, I love the Corinthian correspondence, but it's it's kind of gritty, and so uh, I love there's the, a lot there. Uh, yeah, I love the testimony on the resurrection, obviously. But um, but man, but Ephesians is captured. Yeah, last study leave, yeah. you know, is when it really hit me as I was studying, and as you said, it's been hanging in the air with us for a while. Yeah, so we, I've just we, come to a deeper. We focused appreciation on it for at it. staff retreat last mm-hmm. year because we knew it would define this year, mm-hmm. and yeah. then here we are. It's like you get to. Yeah unleash mm-hmm. what only yeah. only on three sundays i know because we gave yeah because, we'll let connor preach one this time because, because humble uh, dennis wiles you know, gave up power <laughs> we're gonna let him uh no, it's strategic, our college it's, kids it's are very all coming strategic. back uh, yeah, it's great. and connor he's a great preacher it. so i don't mean that it gets connor obviously yeah but it's gonna be good um we're excited to have you mm-hmm. back in it so but, um, anything particular about yesterday kind of the classic question of like if you had more time because there's a i mean you sent us your notes ahead of time which you do mainly well, for Jen to put them onto slides, but right. for us to know when to do the invitation, right. when to get in for the Lord's Supper, right. that kind of thing. Um, I don't think you broke a record, but I'm, I'm, I'm frozen. <laughs> there's, a longer, there's a longer section of notes pages than we generally get. Yeah. There's a I, lot uh, in the outline this time. A lot in the outline, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm frozen this way. I don't use <laughs> yeah. technology, but yeah. lots of big quotes, lots yeah. of uh, Old Testament references. Right. And, I mean, 
Did you fit it all in? Other what else? Yeah. references. <laughs> One of the things I find the most interesting, and maybe that's a, a launching point, is mm-hmm. your emphasis to show us or to tell us that these churches that we talk about, when you talk about the church, mm-hmm. it's like eight people yeah. in a basement. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. it, it's a, and to reminding us that it's not like they were living in a piece of peaceful society that would wanted right. them well, to flourish. That's like, right. This is the, theology on mission. Yeah. It really Say is. more about that, Luke. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, these are not written to churches with budgets. Like and established. Established mm-hmm. institutions. Yeah. These Downtown. are for people yeah. who are trying to figure out what does it mean to be this brand spanking new people of God mm-hmm. uh, that yeah, used good. to just be Jewish and mm-hmm. now it's mm-hmm. bigger than that. Mm-hmm. And how do we live as that? How do we live in a place where if, if it's Ephesus, you know, you've got, that's the heart of the cult of Artemis, who's a Greek goddess mm-hmm. of the moon, virginity, the hunt, mm-hmm. etc. So how do you live there in conflict with this gospel that, I mean, you read about Ephesus and Acts, the gospel Almost, it causes a riot in mm-hmm. Ephesus. That's right. Um, yeah. And so you got ragtag little groups of Christians and house churches, like mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. talked about. Some of them, some of these Christians are rich. We know from other New Testament letters mm-hmm. uh, that there are wealthy Christians mm-hmm. uh, in these churches. So it's mm-hmm. not all poor people. Right. It's not yeah. all slaves. Some are kind of mm-hmm. bankrolling the thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. we would not have Paul's letters if it were not for wealthy people in the New Testament mm-hmm. church, because mm-hmm. uh, right. paper was. Yeah, very it's providing the means by which mm-hmm. it would go. Uh, sure. it's good. But it's these ragtag mixed groups of Jews and Gentiles, mm-hmm. slaves and free, women and men. Huh, that sounds biblical. Um, I've heard that somewhere. Mm-hmm. And they don't always get along. They don't always know how to make it work. But they've been in they with the gospel. Hardly Paul ever really figured it out. Mm-hmm. Paul says to them in First, Second Corinthians, chapter five, "You are God's ambassadors." Mm-hmm. Um, you are the presence of Christ. You're a new creation. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm reading this Eugene <clears throat> Peterson quote, which I've been on a little Peterson kick lately, yeah. which, I mean, not hard to do. He's but, so good. But about just Amazing. how the churches were a mess. And Paul yeah. wrote his letters to them to try to clean up the mess. That's and right. it talks about, like, mm-hmm. it's yeah. just people trying mm-hmm. to do church. That's yeah, it's right. not information to know. It's mm-hmm. theology to be lived. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think with, I think it, with the letter to the church at Ephesus in particular, yeah, I mean, here, as you said, you talk about swimming upstream. I mean, these people were living in this incredibly pagan city and uh, and overwhelmingly outnumbered. Yeah. You know, and, and anything they did of number would be immediately suspicious. Huh. And so yeah. it's almost like Paul is having to help them understand how to be subversive, if you will, at a level – at, in which the culture could accept it. Yeah. It, you okay. know, in other words, you, 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 there are some things that Paul is going to turn on its ear, if you will, but he's going to have to do it in a way that you don't just completely lose everything because yeah. it, that could have happened. You know, yes. it's almost like they were on a precipice, if you will. If you go too far, well, then you'd get the mm. rancor of the Romans yeah. and you would really lose face in the community. And, yeah. and a lot so, of wisdom. And this is not the only yeah, letter that. this church gets. Yeah, that's right. We don't yeah. think about that, but First and Second mm-hmm. Timothy are that's written right. to Timothy while he is stationed yeah. at the church it's in Pastor in this very church. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And so, and then eventually, you know, um, John will be connected to Ephesus. And, uh, and so... It's a strategic city, but this letter is just filled with so much just beautiful explanations, if you will, of, of the, of the richness of the, of the church and, and a high Christology. And so, you know, N.T. Wright asks this question, what if the reformers had spent all their time in Ephesus rather than Romans and Galatians? (laughs) Well, the reason they didn't do that is because they weren't answering some of these questions during the Reformation era. Like I said, they were trying to help people understand salvation, which was so hard in those days, and escape purgatory. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the church had layered so many things on them. And so, man, they found freedom in Romans. You know, when Martin Luther stood in Romans, and he gets to Romans 117, and he ends up going to his abbot, and he says to him, either we're right or Paul is right. Which is it? Because they can't. They can't both be right. Mm. We, we don't believe from faith to faith. That's not what we do. That's not what the church teaches. And um, so, of course, his abbot told him, you need to go to Rome and you know, get right with God, which ended up being the fateful trip to Rome. Mm-hmm. Where it just turns his whole yeah. stomach. He can't believe it, you know, that this is what it's turned into. 
And uh, when we go to Rome, by the way, we go to that very church where he stayed, you know. But regardless. Little plug, um, Rome, 2024. Five, exactly right. excuse me. Yeah, 25. Yeah. But um, you're the Jubilee, actually. Um, so, mm -hmm. but the reformers were, were trying to answer the question about justification. And so, as I said, they were a little suspicious of high ecclesiology. And so, unfortunately, what comes from that is that it's somewhat of an individualized approach to faith. And then the next thing you know, you get kind of almost like national churches, you know, which yeah. would have would have been anathema to Paul to think that there's the Church of Scotland or the Church of mm. England or you know what I mean. Or, he, he, he he would have never understood right. that. You know, how do you? He, how, here how he in is the world breaking down do all the ethnicities, you know, with the power of the gospel. How in the world could you take this teaching and yeah. justify? But it is what it is. Uh, I think it's, what uh, there's a missiologist who's called it Euro. Tribalism. It's your religious tribalism. Yeah, is what and, it became, and it and it's not what Paul intended. But regardless, it's what we've had. But in Ephesians, though, you have much of what Paul intended, <laughs> right? Is not what has come to True. fruition. Let's just be clear. <laughs> but you have this high yeah. ecclesiology, like this high them. Christology in Ephesians. Like I said, you know, when he starts th saying things like like Ephesians one ten, that he's going to bring everything under the authority of of Christ, everything in heaven, everything right. on earth. Well, think about that. He's, yeah, he's pointing these these the handful of believers in these various different homes. This is who you're following. You're following the one that everything in the cosmos is going to be summed up in him. You know what? Mm -hmm. Think about how grandiose that must have sounded. And then for him to turn around and say, and then the entire wisdom, manifold wisdom of God is going to be on display through you. And it's going to be so powerful and so pervasive. The principalities and rulers in the heavenly realms are going to be instructed by you. I mean, like I said, sitting in a small room with five or six of us, which is what it would have been like. Seriously, Paul, are you you you're saying that about are you sure? us? <laughs> Come on, man. And uh, but Paul had that vision to see what God was going to accomplish, and that's why I tried to say Sunday morning that if we were to take one of them and somehow transport them two thousand years to today, they would probably look at it and go, "Well, that's happened." I mean, he has. Look at what's happened to the church. He's blanketed the yeah. world with the church, which is true. Now, that is doesn't mean true. we haven't arrived. I mean, that we've arrived. Of course, we haven't. Consequently, we still have missions. <laughs> but look at what has look at what ha has happened. And it's the beauty and the richness of the gospel. And he's going to he's going to lay all that out for us. I mean, Paul in, in Ephesians, he, he helps us see just the beauty of how the gospel on the one hand is this panoramic um, cosmic reality and then all of a sudden he says, now, wives, this is how it looks at your house. Husbands, this is how it looks at your in your home. Children, th this, mm -hmm. is, this is how the gospel affects you. Slaves, I mean, to think about how gritty he gets to help us understand this new creation and how, how he, he talks to everybody. You know, why, why would he give a wife instruction? Mm -hmm. Why would you even do that in the ancient world? And why would you give a husband instruction? You know what I mean? Who, who's going to tell a husband what to do in the right. Greek world in the first century? Right. And children and slaves. I mean. Objects. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. The fact that the gospel is that pervasive that it permeates. It's almost like every Christian home is like a tiny church hmm. in a neighborhood. I mean, that's his vision, I believe. It's, a, it's, a new, it's an expression of the new creation. It's actually in your home and your neighborhood. So the neighbors in your neighborhood should look at you and wonder, how, how are they doing that? How are they living out this mutually submissive relationship in a way that, that somehow makes sense? So we're going to get to all that, you hmm. know. So, um, But the I'm teaser. just saying, well, and, and, and the fact that everybody's included. You know, think about for the Jew, for a Jewish family, the only the man carried the mark of the covenant. You know, so a man was circumcised. Nothing happened to a woman, okay? But you come into the new covenant, well, it's not just the men that get baptized. Everybody gets baptized. <laughs> Everybody has the mark of the covenant. Um, and there are even instructions on how to carry some of this out in your own home and how you're supposed to treat your children. I mean, it's to me, that's the beauty of Ephesians. It's on the one hand, I'm, li I'm listening to him say, the manifold wisdom of God in the heavenlies, uh, okay? And then on the other hand, now when you get home, this is how it needs to look on Monday <laughs> night, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And people sometimes read and they go, well, how, how would Paul know about that? Well, Paul was a pastor. You think Paul didn't sit down in people's homes? I mean, he didn't go to a restaurant to eat. Yeah, they were meeting in homes. Yes, that's mm -hmm. all he knew. I mean, he, he was in people's homes all the time. He sat and watched couples 
trying to figure their life out. You think they didn't have questions for Paul? You know, what, what do we do about all these household uh, idols? You know, because everybody had them in the yeah. ancient world. And Paul said, well, you know, you need to get rid of those, mm. you know. And, and yeah. you got a wife looking at a husband going, I told you, you know, because she's a Christian and he's not. And she said, I told you we need to get rid of these. And, and Paul said, yeah, you need to get, you know, you can't have idols in your house. And so he tells them in Corinth, well, what happens when a believing wife all of a sudden realizes she doesn't have the authority to do that in the home? Well, you know, you may just have to separate for a while. I mean, it's almost like he says it with a, ah, gosh, I hate this. I mean, that's what I love about Paul. He's 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 on he's on street level, yeah. You know, with people, he mm-hmm. he's he's lived with people. He's watched them. He's thinking through all this while he's in prison. I believe in Rome. Going, okay, I need to make sure they understand first of all how massive this is and how panoramic this is. But you know, they need to know what to do on Monday night at home, though. So mm-hmm. I, I've I've actually got yeah, to there's talk a way about to live. That. Yeah. So yeah. Hmm. so I've gained a great appreciation for Ephesians. That's probably eluded me in the past because. I just haven't given it the, I haven't given it its due, so to speak. So anyway, mm. so there you go. <clears throat> we we have a lot more to say about it in the days ahead. Um, but like the prayers that are in this this letter mm. are just powerful prayers, mm-hmm. and we're going to unpack one this coming Sunday to mm. look at why did Paul why did he pray this way? Why what was he hoping these people would get? Mm. Well, we're going to talk about that, and then he also says now. Just know that there are other forces at work that are going to oppose this. And that's not Rome. <laughs> Don't worry about Rome. It's the real mm-hmm. forces at work yeah. that are going to oppose this. The forces of darkness. That'll preach. Yeah. That's what you're going to have to figure out mm-hmm. how to deal with. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. But guess what? Here I am in twenty twenty four. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not swimming upstream in American culture. That's not really what I'm doing. I'm not. I'm not I'm not battling whatever um, prevailing political opinion happens to be carrying the day right now. That, that's not what I'm facing as a Christian. I'm still dealing with those same forces of darkness that just manifest themselves in various ways in different seasons mm-hmm. in the life of the church. That's really what I'm dealing with and trying to figure out how do you address that and do it in a way that's consistent with the teaching of the Scripture and acknowledging it without being weird. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I do. Because you start talking about it and people are like, eh, you talk about all that demonic stuff. Well, Paul knew it really well and he believed in it. Yeah, I tried to preach on it three weeks ago. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> thanks, you did. thanks, boss, you by did. the way. I mean, you got this guy, this demon possessed. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? And he really is. Yes. But in 2024, right. you're looking at yes. a couple hundred people. I don't know. I, yeah. I'm yeah. not doing the math. But, and you're trying to make it land with them yeah. and not dismissing it. But exactly. also, you don't want to be. A snake handler. That's right. On a Sunday you don't morning. want to freak them out. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> but the yeah. point yeah. is, yeah. demon possession might look really different right now. Mm-hmm. Think yeah. about how it might be lived out. Yeah. Um, what what kind of force do you think drives some of these dictatorial, evil, wicked leaders that are still in existence today? Well, <laughs> why wouldn't I say there are demonic forces at work that are so destructive? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying they're necessarily possessed by demons. Yeah, but it's supernatural no, but evil. There's evil at work in the world. Yeah, yeah, there's something else going on. Mm-hmm. And so we as Christians, we are swimming upstream when it comes to what's happening in the heavenly realms. you know. But the good news is the, the, the Spirit of God is powerful, and Jesus has told us, I've overcome that. You've got to lean into me and let me give you the strength and the wisdom to do it. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I would tell you, I've, I've spent, as y'all might imagine, a lot of time thinking and praying. And as I was planning for the next few years at our church, um, I pretty much read Ephesians every day, whole time I've been gone. So we love that. Yeah. I've, I've spent time in it every as day. As one of your congregants, I would say we love <laughs> so, that. And I would tell y'all, it's going to be hanging in the air we for a while. We want a pastor like that. Yeah. It's going to hang in yeah. the air for a while because it's just good, you know, and, and, uh, it's powerful. It's it's re, it's redeeming. It, there's freshness in it, and um, I'm I'm grateful for it. And I'm I'll, you're going to even as we make our way into these next couple of years, we're still going to be listening to some of the insights that are found in this letter because there's a reason it was a circular letter. You know, there's a reason it's ju- it just kind of kept being distributed. You mm-hmm. know, and I think we need to give it its due. You know. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm yeah. here for it. <laughs> but uh, and I'm glad to be back. I mean, I I will tell you this. I, I enjoy um, 
and appreciate, and I'm grateful to my church for giving me that break of, you know, the regular yeah, rhythm, the of pace, relentless yeah. return of the Sabbath, so uh, to speak. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and so the good news is what it does to me is it gives me a chance to rest, but it also reinvigorates me and just reminds me of how much I miss it when I'm not doing it hmm. because I don't have to preach. You know, that's not the way I view things. I get to preach. I don't have to. Um, I would be fine with every day being a Sunday, to be honest with you. Uh, that would be just fine by me. Well, this um, week, I mean. <laughs> well, true. I've got a bunch of sermons. A funeral's on a Sunday, but you've got plenty <laughs> but, uh, of opportunities to um, preach. But, you know, I love to preach, but I, I also enjoy the break, and I'm grateful, too, for the preachers that the Lord has given to our church, you two being two of those. Thank you. Um, and so it gives me a chance to reflect and rest a little bit and not have that that regular rhythm. Um, but it just reinvigorates me and ri- reminds me of how much I love that rhythm. Mm-hmm. You know, it feels very natural to be back because I'm a, I'm a rhythm guy. You know, I have a lot of rhythm. Do but you? I've heard that in some of the, we have, yeah, you have Dan yeah. Fogelberg. Yeah, yeah, of course. We got um, play that footage. <laughs> but, uh, but I live in a rhythm. I mean, that's just how I'm wired. And so my rhythm is that life given to preparing and praying and thinking about what's happening in the lives of my people and how God can help me, how God guides me to help shape people through the proclamation of the gospel. And it's just a weekly rhythm that I've learned how to live into. And so I love it. It feels very, I feel very at home in it. And, um, and so I'm glad I've been able to work this study leave rhythm into my overall annual cycle, if you will. And, uh, it's really beneficial to me. It's so, great. I love it. Is. Anyway, it's good. But, well, we're glad you're back. Yep, we are. We're back. <clears throat> And we have lots of good work to do together. Mm-hmm. Together. It's August, together. y'all. Together. It is August. Gearing up. So Here we go. check out the website if you want to know what's going on. There's That's a right. ton. It's a good it, it a ton makes it sound like a flood of things. There's some really good and meaningful really things coming up. It's so, a rich month. It is rich it really is. ministry and opportunity. So get plugged in. Um, okay, well we love you all and we'll see you next week. for listening to the tell me more podcast today you can subscribe to this podcast on your app of choice or you can visit us at fbca.org to find out more information about the podcast and our church thanks for listening have a good day